Hey everyone, <clears throat> welcome back to another video. So, up at Accelerated again, and I managed to fix one issue and isolate another with the Supra. So, in the previous video when we initially got it running, if you remember, it had developed, or it was presenting a high idle, and I didn't show it on the video, but the cap for the fuel surge tank was also leaking. So, both of these issues, one's fixed, the other one is isolated. The one that's fixed is this cap here. I had simply forgotten to tighten down a couple of the fasteners and I'll likely end up replacing the Teflon washers that I have underneath of each one of these fastener heads as the ones that I have are fairly soft and I'd like to have something a little bit more rigid where I can get it a little bit tighter and not have the possibility or help alleviate the possibility as much as I can from having fuel spray out since the surge tank does sit on the exhaust side of the system. The other issue is the high idle. And while I'm not sure if it's solved yet or not, or I don't know what needs to be done to solve it, I've at least eliminated it for the time being. And on the IAC, I had just this little k and filter. This thing's really old and probably should be replaced. But if you can see down in here, right where my middle finger is there, I simply put a three quarter inch vacuum cap on it just to eliminate the IAC. And if you notice in the video clip I'll play right here, you can hear the car. It seems like it develops or like it has a normal idle for a split second and then develops a high idle. So with that in mind, I suspected that the IAC was the issue. And now if we slide inside of the car, and I think I just kicked the main power on out the back. I did not. So let me do that. Now that we have the main power kicked on, I can take the switch panel, main power, you know the pump prime, and if we start it. water pump running now just running it for a moment to make sure that water keeps circulating through the system to keep it cool and I did reach my hand over here and felt a little bit of ethanol still leaking around one of the fastener heads so I spoke too soon with that what I'm going to do is to pull the surge tank out and I already have an aluminum disc cut and prepped and ready to be welded onto it back at the home shop I'm just going to eliminate the cap as now that I know if it is pushing fuel out from one of the fastener heads, it certainly is filling the surge tank and the fuel volume there is not an issue. So I'll eliminate that cap, not have the issue of it leaking fuel out as I don't really want to chance it with the proximity of the surge tank to hot exhaust components. That's kind of sketchy to have anything in question as far as fuel coming out of it. So we'll just eliminate that as a, an issue altogether. But you heard reasonable idle now, and it still needs to be finish tuned and everything dialed in and everything like that, but at least the high idle is eliminated for the time being. So that's good news that we got the idle sorted out, but the big reason for coming up here this time is the old intake manifold needs to come off as the lower or the secondary fuel injectors number 12 which would be the secondary injector on cylinder six when i built the manifold and when i put the secondary injector bungs in place i did not put that at least that number 12 injector bung in the correct location so the injector has enough 
ability to move in the bung and the fuel rail where it can come unseated and spray fuel everywhere, which not <laughs> the most ideal situation. So what I'm going to do is to pull the intake manifold, take it back to the home shop, and at that point we can do some surgery on the manifold, get that injector bung squared away as far as its location and everything else, and eliminate that as an issue going forward. So I'm not going to pull it off right now, we'll do that in a little while, and I don't even know if I'm going to film the removal process, but if nothing else, we will reconvene back at the home shop in a couple seconds for you guys and we'll get that wrapped up get that knocked out another issue solved and get this thing on its way to being able to finally come home all right we are back at the home shop and i have three projects to accomplish this weekend and i guess let's go over them real quick so the first of which and the most important by far is fixing this number what would be the number 12 secondary injector bung now if you can see right here you can see a bit of the o-ring protruding out from the fuel rail and you can see just how crooked this bung is in the port here or on the runner rather now i don't know what i was doing when i put this together but the other five bungs are not horrible that number six bung though is causing a severe issue and with this o-ring becoming unseated as soon as the rail press rises it obviously pushed the injector down to seat against this injector bung right here and it sprayed fuel out of the out of this o-ring out of the fuel rail so we need to address that and i think what i need to do is to lower the rail down moving it more this direction to seat all of these top hat o-rings a little bit more effectively and at that point i'm probably going to replace this bung as well to get it straighter and get it positioned the way that it should be on this runner and then i will come in somewhere up where my index finger is if you can see there are there's one threaded boss there there's another threaded boss right here i'm going to replace those as once the rail position moves the position of those threaded bosses is no longer correct. So I'll need to fix all of that, and that will be the main thing that we work on today. Beyond that, we have the throttle body, and nothing huge is wrong with it, but if you look on the back side where the three fasteners go through that hold the throttle blade to the throttle shaft, I'm not super happy with how these are staked on here and i really do not want one of those fasteners to come undone and be consumed by the engine so we will come in and just put a tack welder to on each one of these each one of these fasteners to make sure they can't come undone and third and still a very important portion is the fuel surge tank so if you guys remember from one of the previous videos, actually it might have been the last video, I was battling the or this fill cap on the top of it and trying to get these fasteners sealed, trying to get the flange sealed to the top of the tank. And no matter what I do, it seems to still leak fuel. And being that the surge is positioned near where the header in the hottest part, or the hottest external part of the engine is. I don't want to screw around with it and risk a fire because of that. So I have a seven inch aluminum circle cut out. I was able to do this with my vertical bandsaw that I finally took the initiative to get running. I had to make this little plate right here and everything else runs fine. Oh, I got a new band for it as well. But this plate will replace this flange and while I have this here, I'll also come in and do some gusseting on this mount here, probably this one, and the lower mount I think is probably good to go the way that it is. So we have one complex project and two fairly easy projects to knock out on this portion or on this episode. So I guess without me rambling any farther, let me go ahead and see what needs to be done with these injectors and we can move forward from there.
I have the old injector bung and the mounting bosses removed from the intake manifold and we are a little bit of powder coat removal away from being able to tack the new mounting bosses in place and then determine where the injector bung needs to be located. So I'm going with this order of operations as I'll be able to locate the fuel rail. I'll have to modify my spacers, shorten them a little bit. But once the fuel rail is mounted, that will make it much easier for me to locate where this number six or number 12 injector rather needs to be to tailor the hole for it, tailor the bung for it. And I have this box that is all full of different mounting bungs. And like I've been using, these are all ICT billet bungs. I really like the way that they design theirs. You can see this is an M6 by one thread and just how thick and robust everything is will make it much nicer to weld that stuff. And from Mazworks, I bought a set of 12 14 millimeter injector bombs. So I obviously went overboard, but I wanted to order at least a set of six in case I needed to replace all of these bungs. But these bungs can be a little bit difficult to work with and a little bit finicky to weld. So in case I destroyed one of them or destroyed one per cylinder, one per runner, I wanted to have at least a contingency plan for each one of them. So now that this is done, I can take the manifold over, get this powder coat taken off in these areas that I have marked out, if you guys can see. And at that point, we can go ahead, mock everything back up, get the mounting bosses tacked in place, get them welded, and then we can start figuring out this injector bone. All right, there we have five of the six injectors in place and you can see how much better this rail sits in here. So the injectors all have a little bit of play in them still, which is a good thing. That's what I was looking for. As you don't want to just bind the injector up, you can end up breaking the injector or something along those lines. So coming in here now, if I put this number 12 injector in its home, I did a rough drawing of the area that I have to take out of the aluminum here to fit one of the new fuel injector bungs in. So I'll go ahead and I'll bore out to these lines here. And at that point, I should be able to slide the injector in its place and mark out how it needs to be trimmed, get it put on here and weld it up. And then this will be pretty much done as far as the intake manifold is concerned. There's the placement of the new bung. Don't mind the gaps, that's why we have filler rod. But I'll be able to fill that up and then I can come in and port the inside of it to make sure there's no flow obstructions. But I want to show you guys a uh, little bit outside. Because we have a pretty nice thunderstorm that's rolling in. And thunderstorms are my favorite type of weather. I really like storms. So let's go take a look outside. It's very windy. You can see all the clouds and everything. Felt a couple of raindrops. This is going to be a good one. So hopefully I don't lose power. Um, I guess I should go ahead and get that bong welded in before I do. So let's go ahead and get to it. There we have it, new injector bung. Everything is positioned much better than it was before. The welds aren't the prettiest things in the world, but I don't really care. <laughs> I'm just happy that this is done. I really wasn't looking forward to doing this modification, but all is well. And on the inside, 
there is a little bit of cleanup to be done I have to get in there with a burr and a cartridge roll just to get it, get it cleaned up a little bit take some of those high spots off and then obviously i'll need to clean the inside of the manifold out because there's probably a ton of grinding debris and metal shavings and everything else in there but right now we have six injectors all in the correct position have our new mounting bosses modified stanchions everything else all is well and this manifold for all intents and purposes is ready to go back on the car so the next thing that we need to knock out is the fuel surge tank and all this should be a pretty simple project all that really needs to be done is take this cap off prep this surface and then weld our aluminum disc onto it so i'm going to go grab some lunch first and when I get back from that, I can go ahead and get that knocked out. And I guess I can show, I already did the throttle body off camera as three tack welds, not the most interesting thing. But you can see right here, all the back sides of the fasteners tacked in place. Those should never come out unless I grind these tacks off, which would mean that I want them to come out. But with that being said, let me go get food. And then I'll get back, we'll get the rest of this knocked out and get these parts ready to go back up to accelerated be reinstalled on the car and that'll be that the cap is off of the fuel surge and i went ahead and cleaned the inside of it out clean the top of it everything is ready to weld so before i do that let's take one last look on the inside see all the tube work as this in a matter of minutes is not going to be visible any longer so i have my aluminum circle i can put it on the top of the surge tank tack it in place and then proceed to weld around the fuel surge is now all capped and i will never have to worry about it leaking out of bolt holes again so the next thing i want to do is to gusset this browning or this mounting bracket right here as well as this one or actually i guess i could just do the top one i don't know we'll see see how i'm feeling as i get going with it but this having just a weld on the back side right here and having all this hanging off of it i just want a little bit more structure to it so that way with as i always talk about vibrations and everything else going through the car i don't have to worry about that bracket breaking off so it'll be kind of a triangular curved interesting deal hopefully i have some aluminum over in my stash there that i can make work for this but i'll see how far i can get on it as i have some prior obligations that i have to go attend to this evening but if i can't get this done today I can come back in tomorrow, knock out the rest of it, and then all these parts will be completed and ready to go back up to accelerated. One other quick point I wanted to make in regards to welding any type of fuel container, fuel vessel, something like this surge tank or a gas tank or something along those lines, always be sure to let it air out. And one thing that I like to do is actually flush whatever the container is out with water. And if you flow water through it and keep it cycling through, you'll cut down on the amount of fumes that are on the inside of it. And obviously you have to let it dry out and drain all the water out and everything else. But the last thing that you want to do is start welding a fuel container and make a bomb right in front of you. So this one, I didn't rinse out with water. I let it sit and air out for a day and a half something along those lines but it was good to go as you saw it obviously did not explode and the fact that my face is still attached to my face we're all good to go with it so a little tech tip for you there be safe anytime you're welding anything that contains the fuel that will be running the vehicle and you'll be good to go
the upper mounting bracket for the fuel surge tank now has a gusset on it. So did my normal beauty holes deal. And this one, I did a little radius panel right here. So that way it's kind of a triangle, but has one radius, two radius, and then the flat side. I don't know, I thought it looked kind of cool. And you can see it's welded the whole way around on the top, the two verticals there. And then on the bottom side, I wrapped the welds around as much as I could, just to add a little bit more strength. But this surge tank is ready to go back on the car. I just have to put my fittings back in, but that is all good to go. So what was supposed to be a quick day on Saturday, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get all of these parts modified, ended up being very productive, and I was able to check everything off the list that I had. So you saw I got the new injector bung put in, redid the mounting bosses for it, and one thing I didn't mention earlier is I had to shorten the mounting stanchions and in doing so I have much more thread engagement in the mounting bosses and the rail is much more solid than it was before. So this is done. I just have to port the inside of this port, which I'll do off camera as I hate porting and I just want to get it done. But we also have our three tack welds on the inside of the throttle body so that way the screws don't come out. And then what we just finished up capping and gusseting the fuel surge tank. So like I said, all in all, a very productive day. I'm very happy with everything I was able to get accomplished. And now I can head back up to Accelerated this upcoming week with parts that are now hopefully proper and there'll be no more leaks, no more issues. So with those three projects being completed, that's going to be a wrap for this day in the shop. So pretty soon this bay will be filled up with my pride and joy and I cannot wait to get it back here. But that's going to be for another day, an upcoming video. This one's over, so let's wrap it up. So thank you guys as always for tuning in and watching me play around here and then I have been playing around up at Accelerated, getting projects wrapped up and everything else that's going on around here. And we have some big things coming with getting the Super back here and getting back rolling on it, with Russ knocking the wiring out on the SC, and then a few other projects that will be upcoming, though I don't have a time frame for them. We'll have plenty of work to knock out, especially once it cools off come fall and winter time. But without rambling anymore, that'll be the end of this video. So. As always, until next time, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and I will see you guys in the next episode.